this morning I wanted to talk a little bit about um, things that we can do. There's a uh, couple of stories I'll share with you along the way. One of them I just wanted to start us out with. Uh, there was a um, friend of mine that was ended up becoming the preacher at the Bear Valley Church of Christ in Denver, Colorado. And a uh, big church, and there was a lady there that had served in the uh, women's program. That's um, also a college where I went to school. Uh, and there was a, a lady who had raised a family. She was uh, the wife of one of the elders, uh, raised uh, two sons that went on to become one, uh, the president of one of the uh, Bible colleges and another one that ended up uh, going on to be a preacher and an elder. Um, and then they also had a daughter, and, and the daughter had uh, married the preacher, so she was a preacher's wife. She got to the end of her life, and she had cancer. She knew she was going to die. And uh, the preacher had gone and, and uh, sat by her bedside, and as they were talking, he was just talking about all of the, you know, thanking her for the faithful example that she was uh, to, um, to her congregation and you know for her family and all that, everything that she had done and uh, she said he said well how are you feeling you know are you feeling okay and she said well um, I just hope that I've done enough I hope I've done enough and uh, because she feels like she uh, could do more or that's always a natural inclination because we're not fully perfected until the day of Jesus Christ, until we go home and meet with Him. Um, but there are some things that we can know, just that little bit of doubt uh, after everything that she had, you know, her example and, and uh, living her life faithfully um, to the Lord and through her children, to her husband and all those kind of things. Um, it says that we can know where we're going. Uh, it's not a, there, we, can, we can understand that and know without a doubt and so it's really nice to have some certainties uh, in our faith there's so many uncertainties that are in the world um, one of the things I wanted to uh, or one of the scriptures which was the scripture reading this morning 1 John chapter 2 verse 3 through 5 uh, now we by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments he who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. There is a time right now that is just a time of doubt, a time of skepticism in, this, in society. Um, I think that we've been uh, conditioned to question everything. Uh, because we've been so light to it. There's so much information that's out there um, that we may have been told is true and then come to find out. And it was a lot of times by sources that we really respected and trusted just to find out uh, down the road that that wasn't true. And so we're conditioned in society today uh, to question things. It's a big time of skepticism. It's just my personality. Uh, that I have that uh, kind of built in or hardwired into my psyche is that it's, I almost always have since I was a child doubted everything um, until it was proven uh, correct to me. I think that Thomas is the one of the uh, disciples that I could probably identify with the most because Thomas is doubting Thomas. Um, and having questions until Jesus really proved who he was to Thomas. Uh, Thomas had questions and he was skeptical. And so that's, that's kind of what uh, is hardwired within my psyche. However, because of the conditions of the culture, the things that we've been told that ended up not being true, um, we just seem to want to question everything. And there are some things that really should be questioned, you know, very, very legitimately. I think that uh, the younger generations that are coming up are, are challenging uh, norms and um, traditions, particularly within the church. 
just for the sake of questioning them. And sometimes, um, my mom always taught me this, because I told you so is a good enough reason. You know, why, but why? I always would ask why. Three letter question that all parents just love to hear. Why? Um, and sometimes, because I told you so is good enough. Uh, and sometimes, well, why do we do it this way? Sometimes it's okay to challenge so that we understand why we do the things that we do. It's good to know the why uh, behind. However, just to challenge and say, well, just because it's been like that uh, doesn't mean that we automatically shouldn't do it like that anymore just because there's no good reason why. Uh, the generations that it's served well to before now, uh, that's good enough for me, uh, for why we do the things that we do. But in a time of skepticism and doubt, um, it's really a, a good thing uh, to have some biblical certainties. Now, take note that many are happy and content with speculation and uncertainty. Um, not me. Uh, I would like to have some solid ground to stand on. Um, but there are many, uh, and you might say, uh, why? Why would there be somebody who likes the uncertainty and the speculation about um, and I can, I can only explain it kind of one way is uh, the, you know, I'm in the people helping business and some people mostly are making decisions that are affecting other things in their lives and I can see how this trajectory is leading them into a bad in a, into a bad situation that they're already in probably by the time I get involved um, and so I I might give them some options, if you will, or some recommendations of different things to try to alleviate their situation. And somebody uh, told me once that uh, it's kind of like somebody who has a new problem for every solution I come up with. Um, if you have a problem with every solution uh, that somebody's coming up with, obviously what's going on in their life isn't working for them at that time, so they like and they in, enjoy uh, and are content with speculation and uncertainty. A lot of, not necessarily in, in the uh, uh, the realm that I'm, I'm talking about, but uh, just in general in the world, um, if there's constantly, you know, I, I had a guy in my Bible class years ago and uh, I'd always have to study every angle uh, of the scripture and how it could be twisted and contorted to say something that it really didn't say. Uh, and I'd have to come up with every angle and think and be prepared for when this gentleman brought this up uh, that I'd have an answer to be able to say, this is why, you know, and this is what that means and this is why it doesn't mean that. And uh, you just like to be a, a skeptic and try to... Uh, and I think that he believed just the same things that I believed, the way that I believed him. But just for the sake of argument, he just loved to be argumentative. He loved to be uh, constantly challenging. And, and uh, so the, his delight was in um, the uncertainty and in speculation that is out there. It's almost like uh, it generates some kind of a effect that he really liked. And so the Bible gives us some certainties. In Job 19.25, it says, and this is also, also part of a uh, song that we sing. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And this is the basis of the gospel, and then some great gospel songs. Uh, do you guys sing that one? I know, I know that my Redeemer, you know that one? Uh, that's a good one. If you know, you should. Uh, I know that my Redeemer lives. Um, one of the things that uh, is it's the, at the core of the gospel message is that as Jesus arose and went back to heaven and is waiting for us, that's kind of like uh, understanding and knowing um, without any doubt that at some point, um, whether we see it in our lifetime or we see it um, in the next life, that he is standing there for us. He shall stand on the earth 
once again as the basis, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Uh, we know uh, there are people who, and it's been, it was tried and all of those, it was proven beyond shadow of a doubt that Jesus did, did live again, that Jesus does live again. Um, while others um, are dead and are in the grave, we can witness them here, uh, their remains, and people have testified that the spirit of Jesus presented after his death um, and resurrected into the heavens. It's good to know that we have a Savior who lives. We have a Savior um, who died for us but is alive today. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 says, Therefore he also is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Uh, because because of uh, his death and because of his now living, his eternal life on the earth, we put our trust and our hope and our faith that he can do that for us according to Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25. It says that as we come to him in faith, he is able to save even us. Uh, Paul, as he writes so many times about the um, conflict that's going on within his own mind and within his own uh, faith and works walk that even Christ come to save a sinner or he calls it a wretch like him as we sing in the song Amazing Grace we can know that we also have life after death because the first one raised from the dead in whom we put our faith covers all of our sins Jesus lives today in 1st John chapter 3 and verse 14 we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Uh, as we um, can know that we have passed uh, from the spiritual separation from God, we love others, not only ourselves. Philippians chapter 3 uh, talks about that. Living for um, a life that is faithful and true to our brethren, living a life that is true and faithful to Jesus Christ, not perfectly, but with the intention of doing the right thing and helping others and, and uh, really putting our faith uh, on trial and being able to, uh, to show to others through our works the things that we are doing because of our faith. We know that we have passed. Uh, sin separated us from God, but that spiritual death, salvation, however, the new life that a born again Christian has faith that Jesus Christ can um, raise us from the dead. It's our new life, our start over point. Uh, there is a, a gentleman who, uh, I think he has a movie or, and, and he has written books, He's got a podcast that, um, does everybody remember Duck Dynasty uh, from a couple years ago? Uh, Phil Robertson. Um, Boy, he just tells it the way it is. You know, I really like the simplistic uh, message that he has. And uh, he's, he was up talking one time, and I, I was watching one of his sermons um, online, and he said, well, here's what I know. He's just very basic. One of these days, I'm going to be in the ground. And so are you. All of us are going to be in the ground. And there's the problem. How do we get out of the ground? How do we get out of the ground and up to heaven? Well, this is what we know. And he quoted that passage. He said, we know we pass from life to death because we love the brethren. He talks about Hebrews chapter 7. Therefore, he who is able uh, to save the uttermost of those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them, because he lives because of his example of being able to overcome the grave, then we have confidence that he can do the same thing for us because he said he was going to do it and he did it. And because he said he was going to do it for us and then he's going to do it. Future tense. For all who come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ shall be saved. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Another thing that we can know. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have come new uh, or have become 
can be made new. For anybody who is in Christ, there is now no condemnation. He is a new creation. Um, I think it's interesting at the time of uh, the confession and the faith and the baptism. Uh, I've talked to people before um, and after. The day after that they um, were converted to Christ and say, how did you sleep last night? And they always say, this is the best night's sleep I've ever had. There's something about washing away within our conscience and having redemption, the redemption story uh, in our life. Something about having peace of mind that helps us to sleep. Uh, and I'm a pretty heavy sleeper anyway. Uh, I remember back to uh, my baptism. All of the things that were bothering me leading up to my, my baptism, obviously I needed to have washed away. And it, they, um, those were things that I had worried about for days and weeks and even months uh, at the time that I was uh, put my faith in Christ and was baptized. Um, I felt like a, a weight was lifted off my shoulders. The thing that I knew at that time is that I have faith, excuse me, that I, now that I have been born again, kind of had, had the slate wiped clean. And now I can now walk in doing this life because of Jesus and the things that He has done for me. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. All things work together for those who love God according and called according to His purpose. Uh, sometimes as Christians we can walk through life and think things aren't going the way that I think they should. Uh, if, if Romans chapter 8 verse 28 is real and true, why am I facing so many hardships in my life? Well, because you don't see the whole picture. God works all things together for the good of those who love God. I've, I've gone through some pretty serious trials in my own life. And on the end of it, when I see how God has put it all back together so much better than it was before and so much better than I could have ever done on my own, I think, yeah, Romans 8, 28, God really does work in all manners, all things together for the good of those who love Him. Sometimes bad things have to happen to good people for a better result. Sometimes um, we bring some of those things onto ourselves and God puts them back together better than we ever could have. But we know, and, and we have to trust when we're going through trials, and that's what the Bible class is about this morning. We have to trust that all of the things that are going on are going to make us better. There's some reason, there's some underlying reason why we're going through the things that we are. There's a saying that says that God can take lemons and make lemonade. Um, God can take a vacant lot and build something beautiful on it. There could be a, something that you think is really nice on that lot. It can be destroyed and God can build it back so much better than what it was before. Those are the things that we know. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house, if this tent is destroyed, we have a building with God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We know that the end of this life isn't the end of our existence. We know, according to Jesus' promises, that when He goes away, He's going to prepare a place for us, that where He is, we may be also. Matthew chapter 10, 28, And do not fear those uh, who can destroy the body, but cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both. Um, and in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are, uh, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when we are like him, 
And when he is revealed, we should be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Uh, we will recognize Christ. We will see him face to face. We will know who that is. And we will remember the promises that he has given us through his scriptures. That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the perfect sacrifice, will come to redeem us. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Christ is able to save us. 2 Timothy chapter 2, or excuse me, chapter 1 and verse 12. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until this day. Another song. That's a verse of the song. Uh, I know that he is able to keep his promise that he gave to me because he kept it to his son. You can know for sure that if you have faith in God, have that uh, knowledge through the scripture of who Jesus is, and you put your faith in him, you can know that there is a path that leads to heaven. You can know that when you repent of your sins and turn your ways to God's ways, not perfectly, but to start walking in a direction that is fulfilling and rewarding in God's terms, that he is able to save you. You can know that through repentance and baptism, according to Mark chapter uh, 16, verse 15 and 16, that when you are baptized, this is another way to declare to the world that I am His. We can know. It says that through baptism in, in uh, Romans chapter 6, and verse 3 and 6, that our sins are now washed away. We can know at that point. A lot of people, people have a a uh, false impression according to the scriptures of when eternal life begins. Eternal life does not begin at the resurrection. Eternal life begins the moment that you put your faith in Christ and you become a Christian. Your sins are washed away. That's not going to be rehashed. We're not going to just sit in front of the, um, the judgment seat of God afraid and unknowing of what's going to happen. Those things have already been hashed out. Jesus, even though we were in a courtroom and the accuser, who is Satan, is laying out all of our sins before God. Jesus stands up and he says what? Guilty, however, I'm going to take their penalty so that they can go to heaven. It's amazing, the gift of salvation that comes within Jesus Christ. We can know on the last day, when we breathe our last, that we transfer through the portal of this life into the presence of the kingdom of God. What a blessing to have that assurance. In an uncertain world, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, unchanging. The assurance of salvation that comes through Him. Um, if you have that salvation and you have that assurance, it's such a nice thing, such a beautiful blessing that we have. If you don't have that peace that comes through the understanding of the scriptures and of the assurance of salvation, and you've been a Christian for some time, and you have this doubt, uh, hopefully this message will solidify your faith in the things that we can know. If you've never had that, I would ask that you respond. Talk to one of the men here today, or myself, about how you can put your faith in God and know tonight when you go to bed that if you died in your sleep that you would be going to heaven. If you don't know that, please come as we stand to sing the song of invitation.